Greetings to you all. I don't do album reviews and unboxing videos usually, however, I couldn't miss this one. There are two reasons for that. Pink Floyd is one of my most favorite bands of all time, and the second reason is that this box set contains a Dolby Atmos Blu-ray in it. This is the first Pink Floyd Dolby Atmos mix ever released. I think it's an important release for Dolby Atmos music lovers. To make this video a bit more informative, I'll be comparing this 50th anniversary edition with the Immersion box set which was released in 2011. Great, just before I start, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to Bortech channel, follow me on Instagram or even consider supporting future videos on Patreon. You will find all the links in the description down below. Here we are. The parcel arrived on the release date with no issues. One thing I can say straight away, it is heavy. Five and a half kilograms to be more precise. It was very well protected by the double box and an Amazon box, which by the way was too big to fit in the frame. The box set was shrink wrapped and had a sticker on the top right corner. Let me grab a blade so I can get rid of the plastic wrap. As soon as the main lid is lifted, a 160-page hardcover book is revealed. This book contains photographs from 1972-1975 UK and USA tours. These pictures were taken by Jill Furmanovsky, Peter Christopherson, Aubrey Powell and Storm Turgeson. The Immersion box set also had a few books in it. One of them was a 20-page paperback Pink Floyd on Tour 1972-74 photo book, containing pictures by Jill Furmanovsky and Hypnosis. After the book comes another box. At first I was a bit confused by the number of boxes, but then I saw a video where Harry Pierce from Graphic Design Pentagram explained that the concept of the box set was inspired by Egyptian sarcophagus. I find this concept pretty cool. Great, let's have a look at what else we have here. The first black gatefold folder contains optical media. Two CDs, one DVD and two Blu-ray discs. I will start with the original album CD, which was remastered by James Guthrie in 2023. It is packed into cardboard gatefold sleeve and has a 12-page booklet. The Immersion box set also has a CD version of the album, which has been remastered in 2011 by James Guthrie and Joel Plant at Das Boot Recordings. The only difference is that Immersion CD has no sleeve at all and leaves at the bottom of the box. Next, let's have a look at the live version of the album. This recording was made in 1974 at the Empire Pool in Wembley, London. It contains the whole album recorded live. It is packed in a gatefold cardboard sleeve and also has a 12-page booklet. The cover was designed by Aubrey Powell Hypnosis and Peter Curzon Storm Studios. And it was based on the original 1973 line draw cover artwork by George Hardy. I believe that was a really cool idea. Again, previously this live recording was released as a part of Immersion Box Set, mastered by Andy Jackson in 2011 at Tube Mastering. Just as the most optical media from Immersion Box Set, it has no sleeve. There is no bonus material included in this 50th anniversary box set. From this perspective, the Immersion box set was a bit more interesting. It had a CD with previously unreleased material, including the early mix which allowed you to hear the evolution process of the album. In addition to that, this CD had a few live recordings and some really interesting demos. 
I'm going to move on and have a look at the DVD. It comes inside a simple cardboard sleeve, which I found a little bit flimsy. This DVD contains two variants of Lossy 5.1 surround mix. One of them has 448 kilobytes per second bitrate and the second one 640 kilobytes per second. Besides that, there is a stereo 24-bit 48 kHz LPCM uncompressed mix. I couldn't find the year when 5.1 mix was produced, but I have a strong feeling that it was the same mix that James Guthrie made in 2003 for Super Audio CD release, and which later was also included in the 2011 Immersion box set. That DVD also contains a 1973 quad mix, which is a great addition for quadraphonic sound enthusiasts. And these are not the all perks that the Immersion box set has. It also has two short live recordings, 25 minute documentary feature and 59 minutes of concert screen films from 1974 British and French tours, which were included on the second DVD. Unfortunately, the 50th anniversary box set doesn't have any video content at all. Now it is time to have a look at the first Blu-ray disc. It contains the same stereo and 5.1 mixes. The only difference is that, unlike the DVD, Blu-ray disc allows you to enjoy them in uncompressed, high-resolution audio formats. I believe that it is the first time that the 24-bit 192kHz stereo mix of the Dark Side of the Moon has become available to the public. There are also two variants of 5.1 mix, which are 24-bit 96kHz uncompressed and lossless DTS HD master. In comparison, Blu-ray from the Immersion box set combines content from both DVD discs, including uncompressed high-resolution stereo and surround mixes of the album, as well as two short live recordings, 25-minute documentary feature and 59 minutes of concert screen films from 1974 British and French tours. And now here comes probably the most exciting part of this box set, at least for me personally. Many of Pink Floyd albums were mixed in 5.1 surround, but Dark Side of the Moon became the first one mixed in Dolby Atmos. It was mixed by James Guthrie and I have to admit, it sounds breathtaking. This album is 50 years old. It was remastered a gazillion times and released on almost every format known to humanity and you would think that nothing would surprise you anymore. Well, that is not the case. The Dark Side of the Moon mixed in Dolby Atmos is a completely new experience and you have to hear it. I saw a short video of the Trin of Dolby Atmos visualizer while playing this album. Surprisingly for me the mix looked static. I believe that James Guthrie had his own reasons for mixing it this way. If someone is using Trinov Altitude processors in your setups, please let me know if the whole mix is indeed static. I am very curious. Great, I think this is it for the optical media and it is time to have a look at what else is hiding inside the box. Next gatefold folder holds replicas of two 7-inch singles. On the A side of the first single we have money and any color you like as a B side. Side A of the second single has us and them and time on the side B. It is a nice addition to the box as well as very interesting to see how the original 7 inch singles have looked like. Having said that I don't think that I will spin them very often. Great, next goes the cardboard pocket which holds a 76 page music book. I believe it's a useful bonus for those who can play piano. There is also a replica of EMI pamphlet and an invite to the preview of the Dark Side of the Moon at the London Planetarium on 27th of February 1973. Alright, finally I can have a look at what is inside the golden box. 
By the way, it was not that easy to dig it out from the bottom of the main box. A ribbon would have been helpful. Here we are. This is the 50th anniversary The Dark Side of the Moon LP. It has a really good looking soft touch gatefold sleeve. Unfortunately, there is a problem with that because every fingerprint becomes very visible. Prepare to wash your hands or wear gloves every time you touch it. Another thing which doesn't look right to me is the thickness of the cardboard. I have compared it with quite a few of the records from my collection and none of them looks like this. Record itself comes in a black inner sleeve protected with an additional layer of anti-static plastic film. It is a heavyweight 180 gram vinyl. This pressing looks quite flat and centered with great precision. If I interpreted this information correctly, this edition was mastered by James Guthrie, Joel Plant and Bernie Grandman. It is a bit tricky to be 100% sure as there is no date of when exactly it was done. I am using Technix SLD2 with Orthophone 2M Red plug and play cartridge. I know this is a very humble setup, however, I was still able to hear the difference between my old copy and this 50th anniversary pressing, meaning that the latter sounded even better to my ear, which I was really pleased with. Great, and the last piece of this box content is 1974 live performance, which is pressed onto 180 gram vinyl for the first time ever. It has the same cover artwork as the CD, designed by Aubrey Powell, Hypnosis and Peter Curzon, Storm Studios. The original 1973 line draw cover artwork was done by George Hardy. And here we are. That was all of the content of the 50th anniversary box set of one of the greatest albums of all time. My impressions about this box set are mostly positive. I liked the sarcophagus concept. The Dolby Atmos mix was the biggest highlight for me. Vinyl records are very high quality pressings and I loved how they sound. CD versions are not disappointing either. The downside is the price, of course. Not a lot of people can enjoy this beauty and it was very painful for my wallet too. Packing materials could have been better. I don't understand why not to use slightly thicker cardboard to make those gatefold sleeves a bit more robust. The same thing applies to the black folders and Blu-ray sleeves. It would also be great to see some extra materials in this box set. For example, including this short documentary, now only available on YouTube. Great, these are my thoughts on the 50th anniversary Dark Side of the Moon box set. Let me know what you think about this edition in the comments below. I'd like to thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to Bortek channel. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye!